Thank you, Sylvia. It's really wonderful to be talking here. And today, actually, I'm not going to talk about cancer directly. Rather, I would like to talk about a very powerful data type that has emerged over the last couple of years, single cell RNA sequencing, which I believe in the near future will be, uh, has the potential to actually make great breakthroughs in analyzing cancer tissues, which exhibit uh, large amounts of heterogeneity, which this technology is uh, aimed to explore. So over the past couple of years, a number of technologies, such as this one uh, uh, depicted here, Fluidime, um, and also some technologies developed at Harvard, Indrop and DropSeq, and uh, at 10x Genomics, have managed to solve the technical challenge of isolate, isolating single cells in relatively high throughput and extracting and amplifying DNA or RNA material from the single cells. We have been, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to skip a few slides to be on time. Uh, we have been collaborating very closely with uh, 10x Genomics, which has developed a very high throughput, very exciting technique for um, microfluidically isolating single cells into water bubbles in oil, so basically aqueous uh, oil emulsion, and um, then basically amplifying mol unique molecular identifiers for each of the genes expressed in each of the single cells, barcoding individually in each compartment, and so you know which RNA has been expressed in which cells. Some characteristics of this technology are that it is quite high throughput compared to other ones, but it is also more sparse. So basically, you get a lot of noise in the form of dropouts, cells which may be expressing but are not actually measured. In general, when analyzing single cell RNA sequencing data, as it has emerged in the past couple of years, there is a very large amount of heterogeneity in, this ty in the types of analysis. Heterogeneity comes, first of all, from the biological questions that are being asked. We may, be, we may care to find heterogeneity across within a given cell type or across cell types or to distinguish between healthy and disease cells such as healthy cells and tumor of the same cell type. Cells can be in different uh, stages of the cell cycle. And then each of the technologies, as it turns out, introduces different types of noise in the data. Because of all this large amount of diversity, it is not practical and it's not possible to predefine a way of telling which cells are similar to which cells. It's very difficult to find basically a mathematical function that fits all the statistical properties of all these different diverse types of data. And Telling which cells are similar to which other cells is, is, of course, the key to doing further analysis, such as clustering the cells into different cell types, or uh, figuring out whether cer certain cells are aberrant, or following cells across time points. So we aim to develop a method that aids in any type of unsupervised analysis, such as clustering and visualization of single cell RNA sequencing data. And to do that, we developed a machine learning method that aims to learn a similarity measure that fits the data that is being given without knowing anything a priori about the data. So how do we do that? I would like to, to present today SIMILAR, which stands for Single Cell Interpretation via, via Multi-Kernel Learning. It's a mouthful, I know. So SIMILAR. Uh, some features of it is it does not require prior gene selection. So basically, you, are not, you don't need to tell similar which sets of genes are important for a given biological experiment. We want to be able to do an unbiased, unsupervised analysis of the single cell RNA data. We learn a cell-cell similarity measure, so we don't um, rely on Euclidean distance or Pearson correlation or anything like that across the cells. And we want to be high throughput and accommodate a very large amount of noise as is necessary for this type of analysis. OK, let me try in the next few minutes to describe the main ideas about similar. 
So what we do in similar, and I don't know if I don't have a pointer, I guess. Um, so what we do in similar is um, we start with a very large number of predefined cell-to-cell -cell mathematical similarity functions. Those are expressed in the form of kernels of uh, Gaussian-based uh, similarity functions. And what we assume is that the matrix that we are being given of uh, cells across genes, that it exhibits some kind of underlying clusterability. So if we were to know the true similarity between every pair of cells, then that cell-to-cell -cell similarity matrix, which I'm showing here in yellow and orange, would exhibit a block structure. Similar takes only one parameter as an input, and this is the parameter C for the number C of clusters in which we assume the cells to be um, clusterable. And I want to say that our experiments show that in practice, similar is not very sensitive to that uh, number C. Okay, so how do we do, we do the learning? This is uh, the optimization framework that we use. I'm not going to go in much detail uh, to it, but let me highlight a couple of things. This is a triconvex optimization framework. We are learning S, the similarity matrix between every pair of cells. We are learning uh, L, and L is basically a low-rank matrix that clusters the cells into a few clusters, C clusters. And we are learning W, which is a weight vector across all the different similarity metrics that we started with. So how do we do this? We assume that uh, we want to find the similarity matrix that makes the cells as clusterable as possible. This is a, like a regularization terms, and this is basically where the clustering happens. So this is the normalized Laplacian, and we basically want to put the cells into C different components. Okay, uh, let me go a little quickly. We uh, in practice, this uh, framework works very fast and, very, uh, and can analyze up to thousands of cells, so basically a matrix of thousands of cells up uh, across 20,000 genes uh, or so. And uh, to find out how well it does, we first started with a few recent publications over the past couple of years of different types of single-cell experiments for which ground truth had been established by the investigators who do the, did the experiment. So we started with 11 cell populations of neural cells and blood cells. Um, th those were done with fluidime, with neuronal cells with sensory subtypes, uh, done with a robotic uh, customized protocol, embryonic stem cells in different cell cycle stages, and pluripotent cells under different environmental conditions. Okay, one thing I want to point out is that our similarity framework when it so I'm showing you results now, um, when it learns the similarity across different cell types, it doesn't fix a single similarity, uh, a single distance function. This is the uh, on the top uh, left you see the loads of different distance functions. So basically, how much each one of these is weighted. On the top right, you see clustering if one of the distance functions was being used. And on the bottom right, you see clustering done by similar. So you see that if we combine many distance functions and we learn automatically what is the appropriate weight between them, we actually cluster the cells in a very nice block structure. But is it a true block structure? And that's what I want to get to next. Uh, another more picture here, what, you saw, what, you see, what I'm showing on top is the block structures revealed by our method similar as compared to uh, if we had used instead the Euclidean distance or the Pearson correlation, correlation across cells. So we see that similar distance function actually does something uh, that seems to be useful. Okay, so now let's go to the results. Compared to uh, ground truth that was known for each of those four different uh, experiments, we compared similar in how well it does as compared to many standard previous methods, including some of which that were recently published for specifically for single cells. And as we see, both in terms of um, uh, in two different clustering measures, one of them measures how well our clustering 
correlates with the ground truth. The other one, how well the, um, each cell, its neighborhood in our clustering, how informative it is as to the true label of the cell. In both those measures, our method significantly outperforms each of the other previous methods. And we then go ahead and use similar for visualization of the data. We do this by modifying a popular existing tool called TSNI for um, T stochastic neighbor embedding. So TSNI tries to minimize, to find the Euclidean embedding of large scale di uh, 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 of mm, large dimensional data by finding the 2D or 3D Euclid Euclidean embedding that best fits uh, in terms of KL divergence the high dimensional data. What we did is we took the distance measure uh, used by TSNI and we replaced it by simply by similar. So we used the existing TSNI code. And uh, here are some results. Uh, oops. Uh, um, why do we? Uh, OK. So it looks like there is a difference between Mac and uh, whatever uh, computers are being used in this conference. So what you see, what, you are, what I want you to imagine here <laughs> is that at the very top, there is, a, and I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't have known that this would have happened. So in my laptop, at the very top, you see very beautiful separable clusters by similar as compared to, in each of those methods, as compared to other methods that look much, much worse, okay? So, <laughs> um, fantastic, all right. So let's see if some of the figures will work. We did some work also on uh, recent data by 10x. These are very high uh, throughput data from um, uh, blood um, performed by the Chromium system from 10x Genomics, and they were very kind to share the data with us. So we, ah, this shows, okay, great. So we clustered the data using similar, and we were able to uncover very cleanly different types of uh, cells, T cells CD4, T cells CD8, B cells, monocytes, and progenitor cells that to the right here are uh, colored in different colors according to our clustering. And this is basically what you see, this is the 2D TSNI plot of the data. Then we went further and took each of those clusters and further uh, applied or, uh, recursively similar to them, to the cluster, and then we found further clear heterogeneity that we are currently analyzing. I'm not going to have much time to go through the details of our findings, but um, it is basically uh, we are very hopeful that similar is able to work in this very sparse, very high throughput data that are typical of uh, the 10x technology. So without further ado, I think I'm running out of time. I would like to conclude. I want to thank my students, Bo Wang and Jason Zhu, who, and also our collaborator, Emma Pearson, who did all of this work. I want to thank 10x for sharing their data with us and also our funding sources. And thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions.